I'm Dan Johnson, and I'm talking with Elena Lewis, who's going to tell us about a new project here. But before we talk about the project, back up a little bit and tell us a little bit about, well, the whole backyard flyer phenomenon. Give us a little bit of history of the company, and then we'll also touch on the props, but airplanes first. Okay, well, we basically started. Um, Grandpa was a crop duster, and he had open heart surgery, and he decided not to go ahead and renew his medical, so we went ahead and he said, well, I'm an engineer and I'll just design my own. So we did, and it just kind of grew from there. Out of the blue, he started there. a project, hadn't built airplanes before. Right. <laughs> but he was an engineer, so he had some qualification, but he just sort of took a whack at it, huh? Yeah, mm-hmm. And uh, so he- How long ago was that? Oh, probably 1990, right around in there. Okay, so quite a while, quite a while back, coming up on 30 years of that. As yeah. You mentioned. Okay. And uh, so he drew out the plans, and Dad started building, and just kind of took off from there. So people decided that they liked it. We never really intended on selling them or being in a business, <laughs> right? but but everyone liked it, so we kind of went with it. <laughs> Brought it out. Everybody liked it, so you decided you'd make one for the person that asked, and then one thing after another. Is that how it works? Yep, that's right. how it works. Now, these airplanes kind of distinguish themselves, to me at least, from many other airplanes out here because this, I'm going to say, steel tubing looks too big for an airplane, but that's because it's not steel, correct? It's not. It's aluminum. It's all welded aluminum. And a lot of this tubing is 028. So Quite thin wall then, yes. yeah. Yeah, uh uh-huh. So my dad did all the welding in the beginning. Uh, my husband does it now, um, both of them, excellent welders. And... Uh, so yeah, it's a challenge, but it's worth it for weight savings. Yeah, it sure does, and it, it gives it a real, I mean, it looks brutally strong. Most of the airplanes that we've seen here at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh have been single place, though. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about some of the singles, and especially the swing wing that people go, that doesn't look right when they see it folded. Right, so the swing wing was Grandpa's answer to not having to put it in a hangar and having it easy for us to transport. As he flew up here from our hometown, Rolla, Which is Missouri. Where? Okay. Rolla, Missouri. And how far is that from here? Um, I think it's about 400 miles, maybe 500. Okay, so um, that's a pretty good trip in a light aircraft. Yeah, so he flew up here two years, which is way harder on my dad than it was <laughs> on my grandpa. He just did it no problem, but it drove my dad nuts. So anyway, the, the idea was to get it in a trailer, trailer it up here, and it'd be just a lot simpler for us. So grandpa engineered it out. <laughs> and and. People see folding wings or hear about folding wings, and they assume both wings go back. That's not the way it is on the backyard flyer, though. No. We have um, four attachment bolts and then one pivot bolt that stays in there all the time. And basically, Grandpa had this idea. He told Dad. Dad's like, yeah, sure. Well, prove it to me, you know. <laughs> so it wasn't like two hours later. Grandpa came over with two scrap pieces of wood from my props. And here you go, Larry. See? See the way it turns? It's like, well. Yeah, guess we're building a plane then, aren't we? So the whole thing just sort of swings. The One wing comes forward of the airplane, one wing goes back, but it otherwise the wing is intact except for swiveling. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have to disconnect some controls, obviously, to let all that happen. Yeah, you'll disconnect the ailerons and your four bolts, and we have a gas line that we just pop off, or not pop off, but loosen up, a and then, on, yeah, yeah. Okay. and it just swivels around, and you put your bolts back in to secure it for travel, and you're good to go. All right. Now, what we're standing in front of here is obviously a, a work in process. It's easy for us to see that, but it also gives us a chance to look at that welding that I was talking about. Tell us a little bit about what this is about. This is Grandpa said, guys, I'm 83, and if you want to learn how to fly, you need to get on it. <laughs> so we said, okay, that's a good point. So we started building. But how building... are you going to do that in a single-place airplane, right? Exactly. All right. So we started building this two-place so that Grandpa can teach us how to fly. Very good. What engine are you planning to use up here? What is this one here? This is a VW-based engine with Grandpa's reduction drive that he designed on it. Um, it's a 2332cc engine. Um, it's going to be approximately uh, 115 horsepower. Oh, wow. um, we have a 2.47 reduction on it, and we can swing up to a 96 inch prop, but we'll probably go <laughs> shorter, especially uh, <laughs> since, since 
we're gonna be flying it. <laughs> this, is, this is a test, so probably be a shorter prop. Well, you kind of know room. where you might get a good prop, right? I think I do. Well, all right, tell us a little bit about the prop side of the business, which is actually probably more people know about the prop side because you have quite a storied name there. Give us a little of that background, Elena. Right. The company's been around for a long time. Um, Dad and Grandpa purchased it in about 2000, and we've been putting them out since then. We put out about 120 a year. Um, right now, I'm the one making the props, so oh, yeah, that's yeah. exciting. Um, Tell us a little like bit about what it. it's like to carve a prop. I mean, these are wood props, so they're not formed in a mold or something like that, like a composite prop would be. And you know, I look at a wooden prop and go, ah, how do you carve something that's a quite a precise airfoil? How does all that work? It is. So we start out with, um, we have about 200 patterns that came with the company when we bought it. And we've made some and added since then. But of those 200 patterns, um, we just pick the one that's appropriate for what we're doing. Um, I just have three quarter inch um, boards and I cut them out on the bandsaw. I glue them up according to what's needed. Um, they set in the press for 14 hours to cure, and then we put them in the tracing lathe. So we have our pattern on top and our blank on the bottom, and we rough cut, and then we set the pitch, then we cut again. Um, and then from that point, it's pretty much hand sanding. So belt sander, drum sander, orbital hand sander, um, and you just balance and sand till it's done. <laughs> and we still use the original lay that Mr. Culver himself built, as far as I know. This is Irv Culver, the the name that we know, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, this was Grandpa, of course, tweaked it, and uh, it's, of course, it's, <laughs> he, he did a really good job. So there's not as much, near as much sanding as what the original company. Ah, uh, is that done. right? Okay. Uh, so Grandpa was able to tighten this up. Uh, of Gene course. was able to tighten it up and make it. Uh, uh, yes. Even better than it had been under Culver's. Yes, and he also has a switch, so now I can make left-handed props, a uh, right-handed prop, just by flipping a switch. So uh, he added that too. Of sweet. Course. <laughs> well, sounds like, and it's quite a family affair, isn't it? It is. Tell us who all's involved. I mean, Grandpa, but go ahead. And it's a Gene Smith. Right, Gene yeah, Smith. So, so okay, so take us on down the line here through all the people, and including yourself. And then you have, a, you have a little one here that I heard did some work too, but. She did. <laughs> you're training um, the next generation already. Yes. So we have uh, Grandma and Grandpa, of course. Grandma ships all of our props and watches the kids. And then we have uh, my dad who does the engine work. Uh, my brother jumps in there Give sometimes. Give us names while you're doing oh, this. Oh, okay. So Larry Smith is my dad. Uh, my brother Grant Smith jumps in every once in a while and helps out. And my husband and I do the props, and he does the welding on the planes. He does all the welding. And we also have my little girl. And this one more cute little gal Abigail. here. Abigail. And Abigail, you did some work on this airplane, your mom says. Is that right? Very good. So How she, old are you, Abigail? Six. You're six years old. Wow, that's great. And you're already working on airplanes. That's even earlier than I started. So good for you. She pops some rivets. Excellent. She does a good That's job. Nice. Well, we love the fact that it's a family affair like that, and you guys yeah. have always had wonderful attitudes. And you know, some airplanes that fly really well, and you have not this one because this is a two seater, but mm -hmm. your other ones, the backyard flyer, that's a full part 103 airplane. Buy yes. it and fly it, and it absolutely is. And have a great time with it. Yeah. A lot of good information. Let's talk about both props and airplanes. Where can we find you on the web, Elena, for people that want to get more information than this? Sure. Our website is culverprops.com, and you can find all the information about the props, the planes, the engines, the reduction drives, all of it. <laughs> Do you have a name for this project, by the way? Oh, we're just calling it the Two Place. The Two Place. <laughs> okay, well, that's pretty specific. That's what it is. Yeah. Well, thank you for talking with us today. We're down here in the ultralight area. You can learn more about the backyard flyer, the single place we were talking about, the two place. It may get a name <laughs> later on. Yeah, and the whole family that puts all these things together, you can read about that and lots of affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Elena Thank Lewis you. and myself here and Abigail at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh down on the farm in the ultralight area.